Hey everyone, welcome to a special Digital Foundry unboxing video. Yeah, historically I'm not keen on unboxing videos because we kind of always know what's inside. But this time, this time it's different. So this is the Zhongshan Subo console PC hybrid here based on a semi-custom AMD SoC. So it's got Ryzen, it's got Vega all in one tiny little chip. And yeah, it kind of manifests in final product form in this console PC hybrid. And it's a very important project uh, for me uh, for a couple of reasons. First of all, um, well, typically Raven Ridge, which is the APU that AMD puts on the market, it's kind of underpowered, it doesn't really have serious GPU compute performance. This does, 3.99 teraflops. Secondly, this has AMD Ryzen technology in it, not the underpowered Jaguars that have kind of uh, limited the potential of the current generation of consoles. So yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what kind of performance we can get from Ryzen when paired with PS4 Pro level GPU power. The other thing of course is that the Pro is kind of like a hybrid of old and new GPU technologies from AMD. This is brand new, this is Vega. But yeah, we're going to be unboxing it today principally because, well, apart from uh, some sort of shots that we've seen from a Chinese trade show, we know nothing about it. What I can say though is that the box is really small. It is a kind of console-like piece of packaging and presumably with a console-sized box inside. And I can illustrate that quite well by rolling out here PS4 Slim uh, retail package from the UK here. So yeah, the box uh, for the Zubor slightly larger, but you can see that, you know, by and large, pretty much the same. So yeah, I'm expecting a very console-like form factor here. So let's take that away and let's have a look at the box itself. So um, yeah, nice packaging. Uh, the product I believe is called uh, the Z Plus. So yeah, you get that sort of logo on there on there right yep there it is right there and obviously everything is in Chinese as you would expect this is a product for the Chinese market however we do get some information here so it's talking about the fact that it's a gaming console plus gaming PC happy days because we can't install Windows onto a PlayStation 4 Pro to kind of get an idea of how it performs from that perspective but you can on here it's it's kind of open which is great Secondly, it's talking about the SoC here, the semi-custom SoC uh, developed uh, in partnership with AMD. Crucial bit of information here, it's talking about AMD Radeon GPU obviously and uh, AMD x86 processors, fine, but it's also mentioning 14 nanometer and this is crucial information. So this 14 nanometer suggests that uh, Zubor are either using Samsung to uh, fabricate the chip, but more likely Global Foundries, which uh, used to be a part of AMD, and they do a lot of fabbing for AMD products. So, great. I mean, uh, we've already got some useful information here, and uh, it's talking about 4K TV support. It's got a Vega GPU. Uh, well, you know, AMD has supported HDMI 2.0 since Polaris. So, yeah, we should expect that. Uh, okay, so let's open it up. Um, I have taken the liberty of uh, breaking the three seals here for easy access. So let's see what we got inside. I'm gonna turn this around actually. Okay, typical sort of console boxing configuration here. Side box here with uh, peripherals and I'm assuming cables. Uh, right. Power cable. HDMI cable. This is kind of like the part of unboxing videos that's incredibly dull. There are standard cables. This is no exception. What is an exception, however? A vertical stand. So uh, Zubo aren't going to be charging me 20 pounds for the privilege of putting my console into a vertical configuration. Great. So let's put that back in. Move that aside. Okay, so now we have the console itself and I'm um, kind of looking forward to looking at this. It already looks pretty cute, even though it's in its packaging. Let's get rid of these cardboard surrounds. And we have plastic wrapping. Let's take that off. Let's move the box down and a manual, which I'll look at shortly and take a look at the box itself. So 
It's actually really small. <laughs> I suspect it's probably thinner than a Pro, possibly taller. I have a PS4 Pro here, which I shall bring out for comparison shortly. Lots of fan vents on it, on basically everything except the top here. Uh, interesting Perspex finish at the front there. Two USB ports, power uh, button, obviously. Uh, looking at the back of the machine here, so what do we have? Um, we have a power here, a standard kettle type power cable here, same used on the PS4 Pro. And uh, well, what else we got? We have a cluster of USBs there, two HDMI 2.0, so in theory, I suspect this would just move into the VR capable spec here, similar to the Intel NUC and we have Toslink and we have analog microphone and headphone outs. Uh, gigabit Ethernet, a uh, very nice looking machine, but um, I guess a lot of you are gonna wanna see how it compares to the PS4 Pro. So I have my Launch Pro here, and you can see that the overall configuration is very, very similar indeed. The Zubor Z Plus is slightly larger, but the Pro is slightly wider, I would probably say it's uh, a wash in terms of overall volume between them. But we do have that manual and I want to see whether there's any further information for us to glean from it here. Now obviously it is all in Chinese so I'm not expecting a vast amount of info here. Uh, ah, specs. So it's just confirming the specs that we already know. 8 gigs of GDDR5 memory. We know that bandwidth there now is 256 gigabytes per second. This is a high-end G5 configuration. Um, it's talking about four cores and eight threads on the CPU, which runs at three gigahertz. We know that already. GPU, 1.3 gigahertz. We know it's got 24 CUs. We know it's got 3.99 teraflops of compute. Eight gigs of GDDR5, we know that too. Ah, yes, power, 100 volts to 240 volts. It is a multi-voltage power supply in there. It will run anywhere in the world, which is awesome. 3.2 amps, 50 to 60 hertz. Good. Finally, we have the dimensions. 324 mil by 282 mil by 54.5. It weighs 3.6 kilos, which is quite a substantial brick there. Uh, anything else? Um, there's actually some diagrams here of the Zubor Joypad, which uh, I don't actually have in my package and I kind of don't really need. Uh, but it's interesting to get a preview of that. Very Xbox-like in that it's using two AA batteries rather than a rechargeable uh, cell like the DualShock 4. Beyond that, it's just talking about Windows and it kind of looks like a normal Windows here. It's actually using an enterprise edition of Windows IoT, Internet of Things. So there is the outside possibility that we're going to be limited in what we can install on it, but I suspect we'll be okay. Ah, okay, well this is interesting. Well, I'm going to move the Pro out of the way here because it's back to the Zubor. It's saying that I can access uh, something behind this. And ah, okay, yes, there is an open slide here. So let's slide it back and see what happens. And it can be removed, which is great. And inside, we have two laptop drives. I'm suspecting that will be the SSD and the mechanical drive. Uh, there are three small screws there. You can kind of see that there, uh, which we can remove uh, to get a look at uh, storage. Zubor has uh, supplied with us. So let's, let's take these screws out. They're coming out very easily, which is good. So what do we got? First drive. It is a Toshiba. This will be the mechanical drive, I suspect. The model number is MQ04ABF100. Let's put that aside. This must be the SSD. This is in bay one. And yes, it's a 4C a brand I've never heard of. 128 gig SSD, SATA 6.0 gigabits per second. Uh, so yeah, upgrading that storage won't be a problem at all. And yeah, you're going to want to upgrade the storage at some point, I suspect. It's the only part of the machine you can do. Uh, so if you think about it, the APU contains the GPU and the processor. You can't upgrade those. The memory, ah, oh, you can see it right here. It's in a clamshell configuration there around the APU. You can't upgrade that either. Literally, the only uh, vector for upgrading is the storage. And uh, luckily, you get really, really easy access to uh, the two drive bays there. 
Uh, so an extra drive bay that you get over the consoles, which is really, really nice. And, uh, yeah, really interesting device, but it's all going to be about the performance, isn't it? It's all going to be about just how fast this thing really is. Now, we know about the Raven Ridge APUs. We know they're bandwidth starved because they only have access to DDR4 memory. This has G5. This is like a step up. This is the same design decision that Sony took with PS4 that proved so successful. But at the same time, the Ryzen CPU there needs to be balanced bandwidth-wise with the GPU. So I'm going to be interested to see whether that causes any issues. Um, but for now, there's not really too much more we can say about the physical form factor of the machine. I kind of like it. It's all about the performance now. So I'm going to be heading off to the office to put this thing through its paces and I'll be back shortly. Okay, so I've had some time with the machine now and there are some absolutely fascinating results. Booting up the machine takes you directly into Windows and it's actually child's play to get everything running in English. It's one of the very first options you select. Once on the desktop, it acts just like a normal PC and there are no limitations on what you can install. So yeah, I even have Classic Shell installed here for a more traditional start menu. Anything you want can go on this unit. And from there, of course, we can take a look at the device manager. So the SOC in the Z Plus is codenamed Fung Huang, which translates into English as Phoenix, and I kind of like that. The GPU identifies as the AMD 15FF, so this is indeed the big APU that leaked so long ago, and that had the same name. Looking at the CPU side of things, Ryzen isn't directly name-checked. Instead, you get this, which is fascinatingly nondescript. And because these are seemingly AMD and Zubor code names, CPU and GPU aren't recognized by the usual overclocking tools. Uh, not even Ryzen Master or MSI Afterburner. AMD's press release talked about adrenaline support, so I imagine this is just early days. There's no AMD control panel that I can see right now. Got some notes on basic benchmarks here, but I do get the idea that drivers aren't mature here by any stretch of the imagination. But still, Cinebench R15 comes in at 586 points multi-core, 115 on a single thread. Let's stack that up here with the two Ryzen APUs out there, the 2200G and the 2400G. And KB Lake G, of course, in the Intel NUC, uh, which it has to be stressed, has an entirely different CPU package, is a lot pricier, um, but yeah, it does have a comparable GPU. So yeah, a fascinating result in that integrating Zen into this SOC produces a lowish single core result, but the multi-core result inches it ahead of the 2200G. Obviously, with its separate i7, KB Lake G is some way ahead, but it's a different situation entirely with 3D Mark Time Spy. The Z Plus has the most capable GPU out of everything tested here, not even KB Lake G can match it. But I really want to draw attention to the build quality of the machine itself, its thermal solution, and its power draw. The more I work with this device, the more I'm appreciating the quality of the hardware here. Turning it on illuminates the Perspex front, perhaps a little too brightly, but it's quiet too, really quiet. We're going to talk about that in a bit, but I'm not going to get away with putting this video out if I don't include thermals, power draw and noise. So the machine is virtually silent at idle and power draw is in the 60 watt range. Under load, things get interesting. Using Crisis 3 with CPU at around 60% load and the GPU maxed, I pushed this to 185 watts. However, when CPU bound in this game, that drops to 130 watts. Basically, the GPU takes the most power and it actually gets a little bit of a rest when the CPU is the limiting factor. This is an interesting topic that again, I'll return to shortly. With the machine running flat out, let's take a look at some thermal camera results. The heat source is backloaded right near the exhaust and it hits 43 degrees Celsius. This is actually significantly less hot than both revisions of the PlayStation 4 Pro I've tested, though temperatures are very similar towards the rear exhaust here. Noise-wise, the decibel meter says it's around 49 decibels, so as loud as the new model PS4 Pro. However, the fan pitch is not obtrusive at all, and I'd say that Zubor has done a great job overall. The machine is pretty discreet. 
So let's talk gameplay. So having booted a range of titles, I don't think the drivers are really ready for any kind of in-depth scrutiny. But my concern is that CPU power right now is perhaps a little lower than it should be. So here's a quick look at Battlefield 1. In the first campaign mission, CPU usage is light, but the overall turnout is sensational here. We're mostly locked at 1080p60 on ultra settings, which is, you know, pretty awesome. So this is kind of one of the things I wish PS4 Pro provided, the ability to ramp up visual settings instead of resolution, to give users the choice. Ultra really is such a step up here compared to console settings. However, moving into the more demanding tank section, we start to lose some frames. I drop down post-processing to medium here, as this gives us an easy performance win and it lightens up load on the GPU but it didn't really do so much, suggesting that the CPU is an issue here. My concern here is that there's um, contention between CPU and GPU for the available bandwidth, and therefore CPU performance isn't quite as high as it should be. And I've got to say, I saw something very similar to this on Raven Ridge. I also played some Destiny 2. Now, as we know, the console versions are locked to 30 frames per second because the CPU power isn't there with the AMD Jaguars to push to 60 even on the enhanced consoles like PS4 Pro and Xbox One X. However, the Z Plus here makes a much better fist of it, as you can see. However, again, when we move into a stress test area where the CPU is more likely to be a factor, frames are dropped when at these high settings they really shouldn't be. Again, I can see if we're GPU bound here by dropping internal resolution to the equivalent of 900p, but we're still losing some performance. So I'd say that CPU is the prime contender it's the major bottleneck here. But you know, again, let me stress, we're not looking at final drivers here. One thing to bear in mind is that Windows and its APIs have an overhead and we're also sharing eight gigs of memory between CPU and GPU. It seems that right now the GPU is allocated two gigs only, which is why I played Battlefield there under DX11. Under DX12, the GPU just ran out of memory. So that's a limitation to bear in mind. So that's really how the Z Plus looks now. I think the uh, hardware is actually pretty great. It punches well above its weight. The machine itself is quiet, doesn't overheat. The GPU is highly capable for this kind of form factor and the fact that it can outperform KB Lake G's graphics performance, in theory at least, is impressive. The points of concern would be CPU performance and potential memory limitations. And I'll be fascinated to see how it runs under final drivers. And I really do think that what we're looking at now isn't final because some titles even produce debug data on screen as they run. So it's clearly not ready for in-depth analysis, I think. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. I certainly enjoyed putting it together. I'd love taking a look at unique hardware like this. As always, please do like and subscribe to support our work and ring the bell for instant notifications. And yes, of course, please consider supporting the DF Patreon to help make work like this possible. But that's all from me for now. My thanks if you've made it all the way to the end of the video and I'll see you next time.